Strowman's classic Hall of Fame inductees has just reached here. We're going to induct 100 people, and all the conversation around the state is going to come to a halt because we're going to induct 100 guys and girls on September the 29th at the Chase Center at 6 p.m. Be there. Also, most of these folks participated in Storman's Turkey Drive. It always happens the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Be there. Storman's Classic 100 Basketball Hall of Fame. I'm ready. Welcome to Community Cross Finding Another Point of View. I'm your host, Stormy Norman Oliver. Uh, before I begin, let me thank a few people. I want to thank Dwight Davis for hosting my show. I want to thank Pastor D. And of course, I want to thank my sister, my lovely sister, for doing an incredible job. I want to thank my wife. We um, put on a uh, fundraiser for Senator Ralph Warnock from out of Atlanta. It was a tremendous, tremendous success. He spoke well. And thanks, Senator Coons and his staff. Um, I mean, it's just Dr. J even showed up. When Stormy Norman threw something, Dr. J says, I'm coming. But that was because of my good friend, uh, <laughs> Leroy Brinkley. Um, before I bring my guests on, I want to, um, there's been a lot of conversation about Stormy's Classic Reunion. It's becoming the talk of the city, the state, and the country. We have the great Sandy Vercurl coming and speaking. We have Terrence Stansberry flying in from Europe is going to speak. It's going to be Thursday, September the 29th at the Chase Center on the riverfront. And guess who our sponsors are? DETV. True, how about that? <laughs> These guys are doling out the big bucks as a sponsor. Bacini Poland, Delaware State, and of course, are you think rock solid? This is, I mean, everyone's talking. And by the way, the list will come out this Tuesday. And Ivan and Dennis will be the first to know. So they'll be breaking the news. My guest this evening, ladies and gentlemen, you know, when people want to be heard, when people want their voice heard, they come to Community Crossfire, Norman Oliver, because they know I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to ask the questions and the country, the city and the state is going to hear it. So for the first time, that's right, get your popcorn, Kathy McGinnis. Yeah, I got Kathy McGinnis, the state auditor on this show tonight with me. Why not? Why not come? How you doing, Kathy? Good. How are you? God, where did we begin, right? I don't know. So, Kathy, God, I, I, I mean, it has, you've been dealing with some tough times lately, right? It's been interesting. Can I ask you, before I ask you about yourself, right? Okay. How's your daughter doing? You are so sweet. She is tough. That is a tough person. I am so proud of her. She has held her chin up. She knows what's right, and she stands by what's right. And I, I'm just immensely proud. Forget the point that she's an honor student, 3.9 double major, and, and a good kid and a hard worker. She's, she's got a heart of gold, but she's tough. So, so, ladies and gentlemen, the attorney general has, I mean, uh, the, the, state, your, the state attorney general has brought charges against the state auditor. Mm. And I think this is the first time in history. Mm. That's what I keep reading. So how did we get to this point and what happened? Uh, actually, what happened is September 10th of 2021, I got a piece of paper in the afternoon. It was a Friday afternoon and uh, I didn't know what it meant. You know, I thought I was a witness. I'd never received anything like this. And uh, I contacted a few friends I knew that were attorneys and um, I had somebody read it and they said, oh, geez, you better get a lawyer. I said, why? And they said, this is about you. I said, me? What are you talking about? Wow. I, I totally stunned, blindsided and confused. And this is Friday afternoon. Keep in mind, had to appear Monday. So I scrambled. And you had no idea this was no going on? No idea. I'm not kidding you. I, uh, I was shocked. I was blindsided. And what I did is... I finally got up with an attorney to call, had never met this person, and I said, can you at least, so we can have a conversation, meet face to face, can you at least, you know, get this prolonged right. like a week or something? And they, that was denied. I remember reading something like, so you were trying to get the state 
to provide you with an attorney? Is that is well? That the, comes that, later. That comes later. Okay. Because by law, I am allowed to have counsel because it's in relation. You know, I'm in the office. Right. And things are all in relation to the office. Would that be equivalent to a public defender? Exactly. Ah. But how can I do that when it's in the same, under the same <laughs> state umbrella here? There's a conflict. Did you know Kathy Jennings? I mean, I'm sure you guys ran together, right? Well, I, I did. That's how I met her. And as I met many people, when you're running for office and there's candidates forums or events, you start seeing the same familiar faces, depending on, you know, what office and what area you're running for. And that's really how we met. So now, right, I'm going to fast forward. We go, we, okay. There's going to be a lot of conversation, right? Yes. So we have a state auditor. Mm-hmm who's supposed to be overseeing the books and auditing. I mean, and you're supposed to be criminally prosecuting people who are doing something wrong. We don't prosecute. But I know when Tom Wagner, you guys make recommendations. We, do, we have findings and recommendations. We do all to, different types of engagements. We do audits, which it could be a forensic audit. It could be a financial audit. It could be a performance audit. But my audit. question to you, and, okay. I and I don't want to chime in. I'm just trying to let the people follow this, right? Okay. I know they audit school districts a lot. Sure. Right? They, they, By they, code, they, we they, have to. They're usually the targets, right? So say you audit Colonial School District okay. and, you, and you find something, right? Mm -hmm. And they're like, now I think you're compromised. Am I wrong? Do you feel like they're like, she can't, she can't audit me. She's an investigation herself. We're, you understand my point? I, I kind of hear what you're saying. But keep this in mind. We have um, mandates, things that are mandatory that we are supposed to do by code. Right. We also have a hotline. We also do a risk assessment survey. So every year we build that into a risk-based plan. Right. The fact if someone says you can't do that, well, we have released probably 50 engagements since January 1 of this year. And we have a distribution list that always has the governor, attorney general, and general assembly on it, plus the people on that distribution list. If it's a school, the school district folks will be on that list. If it was DENRAC, you'd have a whole right. different group. No one's ever said, and sent it back to me. Said, but, oh, I, you're, you're but you understand my point, Kathy. I know you can do it, right? <laughs> yeah. But do you think that well, this investigation has weakened the office? Not at all. We're actually okay. stronger. We're going to have, uh, we have a fantastic crew. I think it's really united, okay. the office. Uh, we are a, a really strong team. And, and the folks in there that are doing the work, they're so proud of their work. They're so proud of what they're doing. It's, it's historic. We've, we've done historic initiative. We've turned that office around. It was a broken office. Mm. 30 years under one style. And I've, as I always said, change is hard. And that's why it's the same, because change is hard. Well, I, I got to be honest. I like Ken Simpler. I think Tom Wagner was a jerk and a crook. And he was probably, he should have been out of office way sooner than he was. I, I think he was a horrible human being. But that's a whole nother conversation. I know Ivan's like, he's definitely going to put up, <laughs> Ivan's definitely going to put up disclaimers. Like Norman, you just said this. This is not the opinion of the state. Yeah, right, yeah for, shoot, right. Okay, let me, let me come back, right? Okay. So, I only know what I've read. Right. So. And don't believe everything you read. Okay, for so. For goodness let, sakes. They let, keep saying I'm convicted. I'm like, I haven't been convicted. Let, let's start with one thing, right? <laughs> they said that you hired your daughter illegally. I, I don't know how that's possible. Okay, talk to me about that. We are a very small office, about 20 people. And we have merit employees, which they follow different rules, which, for example, for the viewers, they get like benefits. Right. Okay. Maybe health care for what they get different benefits. Part timers, we call them part timer or interns or seasonal casual, which means they work limited hours. They get no benefits. But is it, and it's not advertised. We don't advertise it. I can, I can go right now and go find someone on the street and go, Hey, you want a part time job? You're doing this really great. You, you seem like you'd fit in hired. But do you think it's a vanish your mother hires daughter? I hire everyone. No, let's let's stay on this though. I mean, like, I wish my mother could hire me, right? It's not illegal in the state of Delaware. I, didn't, it's not I know it's not illegal, right? But perception wise? I have someone who's a who's a political science major. It, it absolutely makes sense. Think about but it. But you said something, it's not illegal. No. Why do you think so many people in the General Assembly and state agencies all have close family relatives working there? Wow. Delaware's I, a small state. I, I wanted you to say that. You, you wanted me to? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Let's speak the truth. Yeah, please do. I okay, mean, there's well, a community crossfire. Yeah. So, I mean, so, I mean, I used to Come say. Come on, you know. No, you I, know used to, no I, I used to <laughs> say the people, they have so many family members work in the Department of Labor. Kids are not even born yet to be working there. I mean, are you serious? I, I, I have not heard that. 
Yeah, that, that's my God, go up there and take find out their names and cousins and brothers and sisters. Yeah. But but it's a small state. So so one of the charges or allegations is you hiring your daughter, right? That is. So, but no, it's happened? not me hiring her daughter. No, 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 no. You gotta, you gotta watch what happened, because the goalposts kept moving. First, it was I, I hired my daughter. Then, uh, they, uh, uh, that's not illegal. Then they said, yeah, but it was a no-show job. She never worked. Oh shoot! They found the emails and realized you know, she did work. Oh, well, she worked ro remote college. So did other people. Oh, uh, she got to drive the car. So did 24 other seasonal casuals. So where I'm still waiting for the proof. The, the, the gist of this is. The Department of Justice did not prove that she had any special privilege. Mm. And that is the, that's where some folks are in the General so Assembly she... have said, well, my kid didn't have special privilege. Neither did mine. Yeah, well, that's debatable. But was, I don't care. Me personally. But, but she didn't. If she did, it'd be a different story. Well, Why do you think well, I'm fighting? Well, well, your daughter got special privileges and her mother being a state auditor, and she giving, them a, giving her a job. I mean, come on. It's, I don't say, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with it, but I have that's all a different privilege, right? I have all different types of people. And I all get different that. skill sets hired there. That, that's, you know. We, we had two sisters that were auditors that worked right? there, side by side. Mm -hmm. Did they get special privilege because they were related and they knew each other to apply? Oh, I, I get that. But you, you know? understand what I'm saying, right? I see, I see, but it wasn't, you know, it's not the job for us. It's the job for the chief investigator and their team to provide exculpatory evidence. Well, what's that? That's evidence that also could say the defendant's innocent, which they did not provide. So that's what I'm saying. The jury, why, the jury was, con let me the jury didn't know. But they why, didn't have all the why evidence. you? Why you? That's what I'm that, trying to get to. That is the million dollar question. That's the million dollar question. I hear so many things. People tell me, oh, you dug too hard, or you, you went too deep on that one, or you, you, you were looking after this and... Uh, looking after what? I'm a, sorry. a different agency. Delaware Health and Social Services. Kathy, you needed to leave them alone. Uh, or, or I have been told, don't go certain places. And I said, you guys, this isn't about Kathy. I have a audit team and an audit plan, and I have things I, am, I have to do that are in the code. And I get back to change is hard because people were used to 30 years of a different person with a different style, and in comes... Me going, I want us to be the best. I want Delawareans to be proud. I want to modernize this office. I'm going to transform this office. I'm going to get on national committees and look what best practices are and bring them home. And that's why we've had historic initiatives. Maybe I've done my job too well. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Community Crossfire, another point of view. I'm your host, Norman Oliver, with state auditor, still state auditor, Kathy McGinnis. Call your friends, tune in, make comments, help us out with some questions here. Okay, that's one charge. And was the other charge intimidation or that was thrown out. So what up? There were there were two there were two felony ones they were thrown out. But this this was my favorite. I think this is my favorite. Someone said, What was your favorite? I said, the theft felony was because I opened my daughter's bank account when she was ten. It was said starter savings on the piece of evidence, starter savings account. This was their evidence. What did you And get... they they said, Well, you're on her account. What did you get convicted of? I haven't been convicted. What would you get charged with? I haven't gotten, I have been found by a jury guilty of, of, of the, you know, your daughter got special privilege and structuring of a contract. Oh, that, that was the a non-bid under 50,000 contract. Yeah, trust me, I was in the middle of one of those before. Jeez, well, geez. well, when we do engagements and, and the viewers should know this, when we do engagements, we call them findings. So, so <laughs> this guy, what was the name of the company? Who, who got the no-bid contract? We have a lot of people get no big contracts. Well, the it's one a that, threshold. Well, oh, it was, um, the it was one, called uh, My Campaign Group. So did they help your campaign out? Is that what? In 2016. So but they, they work for electeds. And what you don't know, if you, go to their, if you go to their website right now, who's on the picture but the governor and a bunch of legislators because they do policy work for elected officials across the country. So what, what did they get a contract with you guys for? Um, they were what? subject matter expert, communication, and policy. How much was the contract for? Um, just under 50000 And so they're saying that you structured it just under No, 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 no. Structuring, in, according to the code, because I didn't know what it was either. Structuring is when you take a very large contract and you break it in to two or more contracts. We didn't do that. It's only one contract. So basically what they're saying is you knowingly, right? I'm no, just assuming. Knowingly what? 
knew that you was going to give them a contract and it was going to be look below 50,000? Is that, I mean, I don't know. That's that, not, no, no. Structure, is, that what, is that what they're saying? No, no, no. They're saying I took a contract, which is structuring, and broke it into multiple contracts. That's oh, structuring. Oh, gotcha. So they got more than one. No, they only got one. So how did I get charged? Because if you read, I'm, I'm begging people, please go and read. It's public documents. What the transcripts, or sorry, not the transcripts, but what we said in our motions uh, to appeal for an acquittal or an appeal, the judge says in there, where's the crime to the prosecution many times? By the way, why you're going to probably say, well, Kathy, if you're innocent, why did the jury say, oh, you're guilty? Well, you know what? Thank you for asking questions. Not only, not only were they confused, I bet a lot of people right now does, do not know what structuring is. Um, I didn't know either. Are you appealing it? We're not even there yet because we haven't been, the judge hasn't come back and said, okay, I'm going to drop it, or okay, you're going to get a new trial. We ha we're not even there yet. So is this something that's punishable in jail? It could be. Wow. Yeah. Now yeah. that right there is scary. Yeah. So if Judge Carpenter, that's who it is, right? Yes, it is. So if he comes back and say, this crime that you committed, right, uh -huh. allegedly, whatever, mm -hmm. we're going to give you a year in jail, a year probation or whatever, mm -hmm. right? And this is, comes in between a primary. Uh -huh. What happens then? I don't think what so. happens if you win and he convicts you? Well, that, that is interesting. Somebody brought that up as well. well I always ask good questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, regardless, I'm eligible to run. I'm going to continue to run and keep my head up and keep fighting because I am correct. I am right. The chief investigator lied. He admitted to lying to the grand jury to get the indictment. So why are we here? Let's stop right there. Why are we here? He admitted. We have it in the transcripts. He admitted why, why to lying. Here? Why are we here? He admitted to lying. This gets better. Then he lied to a judge to get the, uh, the search warrant. Then he lied on the stand. Chief Frank Robinson, investigative uh, chief investigator for the Department of Justice, lied. And know. guess what else? What's happening to him? Nothing. No. Uh -uh. He said it was an investigative tactic. So, so this brings me to another question, right? How many people are sitting there in jail right now because somebody lied? Or change the narrative to fit their narrative. Kathy, this is crazy. This, this is not right. Well, no, no, this, Think I mean, about it's, people it's crazy and families so that are disrupted and displaced. And, and, you know, you know I also serve on the Board of Pardons. I was going to bring that up. Good God. So, so, I mean, it was so awful the other day. I had so many tears in my eyes listening to this grandmother who talks to her son every day. He came for a commutation. I couldn't see. So, I mean, Kathy, you're going to know now. I had to bend my head over like I was getting my lipstick so I could blink my eyes so the... Tear could fall, so no hey, one, Ivan, can, so no one can see me. So no one can see me because oh, I'm supposed oh, to be tough oh, oh, up hold there. Hold on one second. This is deep <laughs> in so many ways, right? You serve on a pardon board. Yes. And a judge may convict you, right? He could. Allegedly. Maybe someday I'd have how, to be in how, front of that. God. So when someone, how, God. Yeah. So you sitting on a pardon board and you got people's lives in your hand. I and always you got a judge. Seriously. Now, I are you still Are you did. still on the pardon board? Yeah, we just had something last Thursday. Absolutely. This is deep, right? Yeah. But, you know, it's life-changing. But you understand what I'm saying? I do. I'm, I'm trying to get my mind, like you, right? I'm yeah. trying to get my mind around this, right? Because mm -hmm. there's so many moving parts. There's so many balls You're in sitting the on the freaking pardon board that you might need a pardon from. <laughs> Never know. Never know. And let me tell you another story. While I go knock doors every day in the hot sun, and I'm sorry for those folks who have seen me come to your door where my hair's wet, and it's, it looks like somebody poured water on me and I'm dripping. Hey, Kathy, I'm going to let you talk about that. Before you go there, let me, let me keep you right here. I, no, but so, I'm talking so about... So now, now you got... And people you who got can't the, vote. You got the senators, right? Your colleagues. Your mm. colleagues. Democratic colleagues, right? People who you've been... They're not in really a, my colleagues. Him, well, your friends. You've been in a foxhole with them. I saw you singing Kumbaya yeah. with them two years ago. Yeah. Uh, now they say, boom, let's get out of there. And they put the pressure on the governor. How does that make you feel? The political class does not like what I'm doing and how hard I'm working for the Delawareans. But as I said, I'm knocking on doors. But why and they? they do. You know, I don't know. Why, I mean, think about it. Do you, do maybe, maybe I'm getting too close to something. I keep hearing that. And I don't even know what these folks are talking about. I'm just doing my job.
I'm just doing my job. My job is I'm independent. It makes it, I, it shows I'm independent. This is an independent audit office for the people of the people. You said that a few times. Do you see, are you, are you seeing something that may incriminate someone? Cause you said a few times that you, that you may have the goods. I'll put it to people. you this way. We just want a very big, uh, do you have, suit yesterday. Yeah, but do you have the goods on some of the politicians? I do. Wow. But I don't, you, I don't. You can tell us. We won't no, tell anybody. I don't do that. We keep a secret. I, you know, I'm not interested in that, really. I don't want to, I don't want to deal, I, I don't care about those Had things. You, I care about doing my job and doing my job. My job is to go to work and do the best I can and have the best team for the taxpayers of Delaware. I stay out of all the, the theater, the political theater. We, nobody cares about so that. So now you have a primary opponent. Mm -hmm. that the Democratic Party has endorsed. Mm -hmm. And the Democratic Party never says get involved with anything. They always said they stay out of primaries. Mm -hmm. See, you, are you, you surprised at all this stuff? Do you know I used to be the chairman of the party, right? So no, now I you got to, now you got to, of course, come on, I'm storming. So <laughs> now you got the party against you. Mm -hmm. This stuff, a lot of stuff is the first time. I mean, I'm a, a I'm a brother, right? So I know they're going to get me, but this is a white woman. I mean, like, come on, what is the world coming to? Yeah, well, you know, um, it's the first time of this case. I think they said we that was the most evidence they threw at us six weeks before. They the, they gave us this big file of over half a million do, uh, half a million documents. That was the first time they believed this is the first Brady versus Maryland, the the biggest violation in the state of Delaware. What the DOJ did. There's a lot of firsts here. This is the first time someone was indicted. Right. And then they did the investigation. So you're the first sitting statewide officer that has gone through something like that. Absolutely. And honestly, what I understand is um, many people said I, they don't, the political class is very angry with me and very angry See, because, you, you because I didn't, that. they're saying I'm, they're angry for many reasons, but also because I didn't listen to them and resign and they thought I was going to resign. Oh, so that is They're nothing very, else. I was told I hurt some people's feelings. Hurt your feelings because you wouldn't resign. Because they told me to. What happens if you win? Keep working. Build and on the build on the great but what, again, this foundation is, that we have in this no, office. I'm just trying to get, I'm not a legal scholar, right? Neither I'm from am South, I. I'm from South Bridge, right? <laughs> but if you, win, from Sussex. If, if you win the election, right? <laughs> yeah. And Judge, this, I'm trying to get to this ruling. And Judge Carpenter says, guilty, guilty, guilty. Then John Carney says, Psh, I can't take it anymore. So ultimately, the governor has... He can remove me. He can remove you right now, right? And then I could win the election and get back in in January. Get out of here. Mm -mm. So he would have to remove... But so then he couldn't remove you again, could he? That's what they keep... They don't know what to do. I say worry about your... You know, tend to your own garden. Do your own job. Worry about this. Do you, I'm, I'm not getting political... But I'm knocking on doors, and eight out of ten people don't know what's actually going on. And out of that, nobody really cares. They're worried about kitchen table issues. They're worried about the price of formula. How come child care is expensive? This gasoline's expensive. They're worried about real issues that affect real people. Let me stay here for one second. So right now, as we sit, yeah. the governor of our state mm -hmm. could take you out of office. I don't know if he can right now. I'd have to be convicted for him, I believe. I've been reading that he said he wanted to wait till the process work his way and, out. And I am very grateful for that because he but, believes in the Constitution. And this is my point. I believe in the Constitution. Nobody believes in me, right? But We believe in you. But, but so theoretically, he can remove you. I think he needs... But you said I think something. He needs, I think he needs the Senate and the House to come together and meet and vote and then maybe make that recommendation. But, okay, let's say he, right? he has that power, right? Okay, let's say he did. And what you just said, and you stay on the ballot and you win, you come back. January. He, so somebody served in that office for like two days. Oh, no, I if, he point, if he appoints him or whoever, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how that goes. I don't know how But that then you comes back in January and they would have to, wow. Ladies and gentlemen, I've done a lot of interviews, but this is freaking. Confusing. Complicated. It is complicated. You have a sitting auditor. Was, and you won't, you're not going to move. You're, you're like, no, beat me at the box. Let me tell you, if I was not innocent, I have grace enough to bow my head and I would have resigned a while ago. I did nothing wrong. I did zero wrong. But the jury said you did something wrong. They didn't have all the information because the chief investigator lied. 
Uh, you know, I can lie about something right now, too. And I'll then get, people could believe it. I'll How many that. times has the paper, it's many papers printed, she's convicted. I'm not convicted. I'm taking screenshots of all those. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. oh, so take you, down. So you can sue them? Can you sue I, I don't know what my options are. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about focusing on what I'm doing, moving forward. We are running an office. We're busy. We just put out an engagement today. We just won a big lawsuit yesterday with, you, you with, know, a, with an agency. So there's good stuff happening. Ladies and gentlemen, if you just tuned in, you're watching Community Crossfire, another point of view. I'm your host, Stormy Norman. And what an interview we have tonight. We have the state auditor, Kathy McGinnis here. Kathy, another... <laughs> another... Conversation or out scenario? There, scenario, whatever okay. was out there. Not scenario, because it's not oh, a scenario. Okay. They said that you were thinking about running for governor. Oh, dear. And Kathy. I hear that Jennings all the time. was running for governor. Was that about that, too? I, oh, I, I've heard that more than anything. More than, oh, you dug too deep in this agency and you got them mad. I've heard that more than anything. I've, I've heard it's a political hit job. Oh. And you hey, get, come on. Why you, am I so important? Why am I so important, such a focus? I'm just this girl from Sussex doing my job, hmm. going to work. I always thought it was, <laughs> <laughs> I remember that joke that uh, Richard Pryor said, every time the black guys go look for justice, you find just us. <laughs> so <laughs> I, always, I always thought it was just me, because they always be coming at me too. So what are you doing now? What are you doing now? I, well, I just left the office. Okay. I'm here. Ran up to Wilmington. I got to go to a, an event, a fundraiser for uh, someone down in Sussex. And so you're not, all even, over. you're not even... I'm working. Okay, so it's not that's, paying That's you. my job. I'm working. Wow. They wanted me to resign. I said, I'm not collecting a paycheck and do nothing. I wasn't raised that way. My, my family works. What is your lawyer saying? We're just waiting. What? We're just waiting. There's nothing to say. We're waiting on the judge. It's, it's, he has... If the judge can... But what, 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 he kept saying he was going to appeal. What is he appealing then? No, 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 no. So what happened is we filed two motions, one for an acquittal, which means they throw it out, and one is, if they don't acquit, a new trial. Then the state came back and filed like, I don't know, 15, 16 pages and said, this is why you should not listen to them. And then we got the last word and we just filed 130 pages. It, I'm going to send you the link. You may not want to... You might think, oh, my no, gosh. I'm not going to read you, when, you, when you see uh, do you, do you know, what's in there. My, if you knew my attention span, I'm 150 you, pages. I'll uh, highlight some stuff for you. Know, okay, please do. Just the good stuff. The lies. Oops. <laughs> when the chief investigator lied. You, you're you sitting here calling the attorney general a liar. Calling the chief investigator that uh, lied. Well, the chief investigator works for the attorney general. Oh, well. It's the truth, and we have it in the transcripts. And he admitted it. So there's really nothing, there's, I mean, everybody knows it. People sat through court and watched it. Mm. This is... Lying know? to get an indictment, willingly know, knowing you, you had, you, you knew that that wasn't the right way. You did it anyway. What are you hearing from some of your Democratic colleagues? Um, I have mixed reviews. Of course, there's some that don't like me. There's some that never liked me and that they're, they're never going to like me. It doesn't matter what happens. Um, but I figure if you got a, a couple Demo you got some Democrats upset, you got some Republicans upset, who, who, I must who, be doing a good job. Who's your allies? I have some that have contacted me quietly. And, uh, you know, mean, they don't, they don't want to be out there because I don't want to ruin like I will say this relationships. About I don't want, you know, maybe they got a deal for a bill coming up in the next session, but I will tell you there's some, I, I, you know, you know, one, I, I, well, I seem to think, I, you I, know say Peter, I think Peter's was called, um, and I said this about him. I think him. he's just being fair. Well, I think I said this about him when they were messing with Darius. I think that mm -hmm. this guy's been very fair, mm -hmm. very equal. It doesn't matter what color you are, uh, what's your nationality, Correct. Uh, gender. And I, I like that. Uh, I, I just don't like people like waffle. I'd rather you just be. Straight. Wouldn't you rather know where people stand? Mm -hmm. Because then it helps you navigate a situation. If you don't know, then your situation is going to be constantly changing. He's been fair. He let the process play out. So the way I look at it, right, mm -hmm. you'll do well. you still do well downstate, right? And Kitten Sussex, right? That's your yeah, home court, yeah. right? Actually, my, 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 uh, 
My my deputy who's here right now, she's uh, her husband went to Dell State. He graduated from there. Go Hornets. See, mm-hmm. you're my Hornet girl, right? Go Hornets, <laughs> man. So, so now you come down in Newcastle County. Um, you have an African-American woman that you're running against who's mm-hmm. running against you that's getting a lot of play from the Democratic Party. Sure. Um, how does that make you feel? I worry about the people. I worry about the people that I meet every day and what they're telling me. Okay. That's what matters to me. That's my pulse. I want to hear what they have to say and how they feel. Because if I was getting doors slammed in my face left and right, I would have reevaluated the situation. And I'm not. Mm. And people like a fighter. They want someone to stand up for them. A lot of people see what's going on. And they're like, hmm. So you feel good about this election? I do. I do. The people are not stupid. We have to give people credit. You don't believe everything you hear. You don't believe everything you read. People can put two and two together. So you're doing this interview, right? Yes, I and am. We're being pretty um, transparent. I mean, of course. we never talk. We, I mean, because people know if they watch we're this show. We're always honest with I'm each gonna, other. I'm going to ask questions. How did your lawyer feel about you, feel about you talking right now? How, how's, he doesn't know. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, we, Surprise. We won't, we won't hey, tell Steve. him. We won't tell him. <laughs> Well, maybe we'll send him the link after. Yeah, well, yeah, well <laughs> somebody's going to send him the link Oops. Sunday night. Don't, don't trust and believe. He might be on vacation. The news, I don't show, know. The news <laughs> channel even quotes this show. I mean, it's that. Uh-oh. God. So, <laughs> what else? Ha- what, so, somebody in the office is suing you too, right? They're su- no, they're not suing me. They're suing the office. Well, I mean. You, well, you, I know, you, but if I wasn't there and you were in there, they'd be in it, the I th- office. I thought I read where someone. Well, that's what you read, but it wasn't true. It's at the office, and part of that's from a previous administration that I inherited. That's all I can say. So the young lady who's doing the suing, it's not suing I'm you. Not, I, I, I really shouldn't even talk about this one. No, I talk yeah. about it. But you can, yeah. So she's suing the office. The office, regardless of who's in that office. That's what happens in Delaware. So she's suing the desk. If, that, if you had three different heads of an agency and a lawsuit went the whole time, it goes across those three people. Whoever's in office there has that. I, I'm just saying, it's against the office, hmm. not me. So, but you have people in your office saying that you were intimidating them, though. Um, they, the folks, or, some folks that used to work there, yes. Well, what we do, Norman, and I know this, is, this might be scary, and I'm glad you're sitting down. Before our meetings, we would do a cheer. It was our motto, and we'd say confidentiality. Did you? Did you? Were you able to fire some people? Did you fire I, some people? I, I'm not into firing people. People went their own way. I mean, I figure if you don't like something, you move, move on and do your own thing. So we have people who have resigned that maybe didn't like me or my style or the change. But did you know when I just said confidentiality, that was part of the intimidation because people, because we said it was our motto. So is that the whistleblower? That law? word. Is that the whistle, same as the whistleblower? Mm-hmm. Huh. You know, you see me just like thinking, there's a lot of stuff. God, nobody even, for that office, I, I mean. Right? It's like 20 people in there. And that, matter of fact, I got the office mixed up too. Ken Simpler was treasurer. He was, yeah, yeah but no. you did say, yeah. you said Tom. So you did say that. I yeah. didn't know if you were just yeah. kind of comparing and contrasting yeah. different yeah, statewide Tom, electives. I'm glad you got it. Yeah, he's okay. Because he was an auditor, Tom Wagner. He was the auditor. He, he would mess with Ken me. Ken was the treasurer. He would mess with me for shooting uh, marbles. He's, you know, he had people like, I mean, these what? guys, they're just horrible. I mean, some of these people just horrible, horrible human beings. Huh. And they said, well, this black guy is getting a little too uppity. So, but then he had the black guys or the black folks like, here, this is what no, I'm like, dude, I don't want to be the man. I don't want to be the governor. I just want to run a basketball league. <laughs> I just want to have fun. But so, so. So they that, came after you. All the time. Yeah. Really? So, so, and I, so that's why I know about this. So you, you know what's going down. Well, well, you know, I, I definitely know about that, uh, ah. no, no, that no bid stuff. I didn't look, a white guy <laughs> writes the contract. I didn't even write the contract up. I don't even know. I next didn't write out I, my contract. Next thing I know, Tom White was like, no bid. I'm like, no bid, bro. You, well, I, no I, bid. I, didn't, I didn't know the well, laws. Pe- well, people need to understand a no bid contract, is it's legal because they have a threshold dollar amount. Anything under that, you don't have to bid out. It could be for the water guy that comes once a month and gives you water for, and you pay him $200. That's a no bid contract. Okay? So it's safe to say that you would not be supporting Kathy Jennings. 
In re-election. I'm worried about Kathy McGinnis. That's my focus. <laughs> you can say it on here. You think you think you guys ever been in your uh, relationship, or if you ever had one? I'm just focused on doing my job. It's got to be difficult, though, right? I mean, it got to be. I, I mean, I'm, I mean, all jokes aside, right? Seeing you coming, you coming out of the courthouse and cameras. And, yeah. Right. I, I, you know, I always. I, I did want to make the office relevant and let people know because so no, no, well, people know about the office now. <laughs> they know now. This was not the way I wanted them to know. But um, I will tell you, when I first got in, people used to ask me. Uh, I'd say I'm the auditor, and they'd say, "What's that? Is that elected? Is that where do you work?" And I'm like, "Oh my gosh, they don't know." But most people thought I did their taxes. You know what? Now, now, now I got another question, right? Okay. What was it when the conviction was here in Newcastle County? And the, I thought, and I don't know. No, 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 no. The, the Steve, court date. The court date, not conviction. Well, not, well, whatever. You guys were here in Newcastle we were up County. Here. Well, the, the, and, the, and they said, no, you, we, man, this happened down here. I thought it was going to be thrown out. Everything, right? Well, but, I will tell you the, uh, you know, who, who knows what's going to happen. It's been quite a wild ride. But um, I will tell you that it was because of the way it was, the indictment was written. So that's why it had to go down to Kent County. See, and I thought, me again on the outside looking in, and I don't, the only thing I know is what I read or what I see. Mm -hmm. You said don't read the paper. I really? No, I, read I, the paper, but take, put two and two together, too. Don't I take thought, take things for face value. But my, my opinion was, once it moved from Newcastle County to Kent, I thought you were going to have a more favorable jury. That was, that was my opinion. Yeah. Was, was, that, was that you guys' opinion? I, I don't know. So, don't so, know. so do you get to enjoy a count? Like nine people said this, three people said that, four people said this, five? Um, I did not, you know, honestly. Are, are you, are you privy to that information? I'm not, I, I think I should be able to get it. I'm mm -hmm. really honestly focused on, you know, hopefully the judge uh, acquits us and it's thrown out because certainly they were, you know, the jury was not given all the information Information was withheld, and the fact of the, the matter, the lies. How much time does the judge have to The render? judge, I understand, and people have asked me that, too, like, how long, and I, I have no idea. And we don't know. It's up to the judge. So he could drag this out. You know, I, I'm I sure he has other cases. I'm sure I'm yeah. not the only one. Well, I don't, but I will be surprised, right? Because when is the primary? September 13th. So Get out and vote. Yeah, so that's almost, what, a month? A little over a month. Yeah, but like three days, yeah. a month and yeah. two, three yeah. days. So you having a primary. Yeah. God, so that's cutting razor close. So if he convicts you. I'm still running. You're still running? Yes. Because it's not a felony. It's not a felony. So you can run. You still I'm... run. Continue running. Move forward. So, so everything's okay as long as you don't go to jail. Yeah, be hard to knock doors. <laughs> Do you think? Get some help. You think? <laughs> so, well, so this is deep, though. This, I guarantee you, this has never been a case like this before. You're right. You're right. This is deep, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen. Help me out with this. I, I mean, this is. I mean, like, I mean, I interview serious people. I mean, this is, this a is seri serious. This is that's what I'm saying. This is absolutely. A, this is a very serious. I mean, we kind of laughing and joking, but this is really serious. It, it is. And people ask me, how can how you keep going? I'll get up at five. I'll go to the gym. I'll do whatever. You know how I keep going? Because I know. Because I know. And when you're innocent, you can hold your head up high. When you know you didn't do anything wrong, they can keep trying. You, you can keep trying to beat someone down. I've been I've been think about it. I've been attacked, punched, everything. I have the scars to show it, but I keep moving forward. I keep getting up. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you, whew, hope you enjoyed this, and I hope that we have some um, messages. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Kathy McGinnis. Kathy, what are you going to say to the people? Get out there and vote McGinnis on September 13th, because you all know I'll keep fighting for you too, just like I have been. Hmm. Thank you for having the guts and courage for coming on. Absolutely. And like, um, I don't take it lightly, yeah. seriously, because uh, it's serious. It is very serious. You know? And like I said, I think that a lot of things are confusing to me. Um, it, it is confusing. I mean, especially when it comes to if this judge convicts, 
if this judge throws it out. It would, I mean, this judge pretty much has... My life in his hands. Yeah. And think about it, based on so, lies, so, based on lies, Norman, based on lies, how many people are sitting there, how many people are in jail right now, based on lies. Think about it. Wow. See, and that's another thing. It's not right. Now, now you sit on the pardon board. I have been sitting so on you, the pardon so you, board. Don't, do I've you been look, watching this for Do, do you for look at things years. different now? Do you look at some of the things? No, I've been looking at them the same way the whole time. It, Thursdays when I have pardons, I have told, I come home and I've told my husband, I need a glass of wine. I'm sorry, I'm going to say that on TV. That's okay. I, I'll give you, I usually have I'm a just glass. Say, no, no, on Thursdays, it is so emotional. It's like I've been to four funerals because I am in it. Looking at, I know this is life changing for people. They may not be able to go to an event for their children. They may not be able to get a job. They may not be able to get a promotion. But Do you know how it holds people back? These things that the system we, is broken. I, we got family members broken, you're to a brother from and South it needs Korea. to be fixed. I've been, this, I've been saying that for forty years. Well, let's fix but, it. But let me ask you a question. So, stay on this part and thing. So, if you are convicted, theoretically, right? Mm -hmm. You can't serve on the pardon board. I wonder, do they appoint? This is so many, right? It's so yeah, many. Yeah. So do they appoint somebody to sit in your seat? I have no idea. I have no idea. Honestly, I don't even think that way. I think good. I think positive. I have the faith that it's all going to work out okay. Wow. Ivan, <laughs> help me here. Is Ivan awake? <laughs> Am I boring? Now? Ivan, you understand this? This is, this is really complicated indeed. This is really complicated. It is. And you know what? We need people to stand up, and we need people with a spine to stand up, no matter how they come at you, no how they try and get at you, lie, break you down. You go, keep getting forward. It's, everyone's going to get knocked down. It's, it's how you get up. I would love for Kathy Jennings to come on the show. I, um, you should invite her. Oh, I'm inviting her now. You know, because I've had the U.S. attorneys on here several times. I've had attorney generals um, Jane Brady's been on you, here. You have very good, um, I've seen, you know, yeah, I, I watch Crosshair. Yeah. You, have, you have a great, uh, a different uh, broad spectrum. You have, you know, people with different professions, people yeah, from yeah. different areas. It's great. It's the best show in the world. That's <laughs> why people watch me. That's because it's you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, anything else you want to say? No, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to share a little bit, a little snapshot yeah. into what's been going down. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can take your, you can figure it out yourself. I mean, I'm just, hey, I just asked the question. I'm just, I just, I'm just an invited guest. <laughs> so, again, September the 29th at 6 p.m., the biggest event in the history of the state. Forget about the Delaware Hall of Fame. Forget about the Delaware Basketball Hall of Fame. Forget about the African American Sports Hall of Fame. Only worry about Storman's Classic Hall of Fame. It's the talk. I mean, like, everywhere I go, people are talking about it, and it's, the list will come out Tuesday, and no, Ivan is not on there. That's the only secret that's out, because he was a bruiser. I'm going I'm I'm to get one, but uh, who, was, who was the butchers? I have Ivan, I have Sadiq, you know, Granville Brown. Mm -hmm. I just put you guys, like, in a, in a little box of your own. But you're gonna be, it's going to be interesting. I mean, we had 20 girls. We, got, we had 800 applicants. Wow. And we only let 80 guys in. 800? Yeah, it's that crazy. You should come down. This is going to be big. I mean, I so it's going to be down. September the 29th at the Chase Center. I got to thank my wife. God, Lynn did a fabulous job in helping me organize this. There's no way I could have did it. So thank you, Lynn. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Seriously, I hope um, that everybody realizes that. Um, and the committee, uh, we had a, a number of minutes members on the committee. I don't have the list in front of me, so I don't want to start naming people off. But we're going to honor a lot of people. We're going to honor some founders. I mean, we're going to honor even some, I mean, like the sponsors. I will tell you, if it wasn't for Dan Frawley, when, when I was working at Dan Frawley's office, he really took it off. Okay. Uh, Dan, then James Seals, Mayor Seals, mm -hmm. he was a state senator when he was the mayor. He really helped us out tremendously. Joe Williams, who was a, a member of my fraternity, Cap off side, he gave, we were playing for shirts and skins, and he gave us like $200 and brought us our first shirts. Cap off side, Phi Du Pi. Marvin Thomas from Southbridge. Marvin had been a mainstay, mm -hmm. you know, in Southbridge neighborhood house. Then we, and then I got to be honest, a guy like Charles Potter, who sponsored our 12 to 14, 
these guys will bring the bands, the drums, the horns. And so those are the founders, I mean, the sponsors who we're going to honor that night. Oh, that's nice. Besides the founders and the inductees. I, I would tell, I will talk about the inductees next week. Okay. Because I can't talk about it this week. So ladies and <laughs> gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the show. I'm out of here like Vladimir, whoever Vladimir is. Peace and soul like Don.